All right, everybody, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hopefully get this one do it, done quickly. Um, it took me a minute to figure out what I needed to do differently to um, kind of get the sort where I wanted to get it. So let's take a look at what we got. All right. Um, first thing, I guess we'll go through the uh, character template. All points in the health. Attributes are 13 magic, uh, 35 health, 21 stamina. The damage is around 3,000, but whenever we use our uh, crit surge, it's up to uh, 3,500 right about. Spell resists at 22, uh, but whenever we proc everything that we need to, we are sitting at 31 and 29, which is respectable. I wouldn't say it's the best, but it actually plays well in the way that this build is made, okay? The crits are okay, but not great. But whenever we use our dark deal or any other dark magic we'll talk about before is going to give us 6% more crit through spell crit. And we're good that way. Okay. That's the build that way. Uh, the food we have on is smoked bear haunch. We want as much region as possible. You don't have to use that. You could use jewels of misrule if you'd like. The thief... Uh, is our Mundus stone and that's about it when it comes to uh, buffs and buffs and, and non buffs or secondary buffs okay the skills we have on all right we're gonna go back bar first we have elemental susceptibility because that plays into one of our sets on the back bar we're gonna have camouflage hunter just as a dead a skill we're not gonna use it I don't like having a bunch of skills on my bar I'm not trying to write a thesis when I'm playing the game okay I'm trying to hurry up get done what I got to get done and move on I like Crit Surge because it has a, a 33 second proc timer. I would prefer the Magicka version over Hurricane, but you can take Hurricane for the speed. The Magicka version plays better into this uh, lightning form, and I'll tell you why, because it's gonna reduce your costs needed to cast the spell and take it away from the stamina pool and place it into your magic pool. It's also going to uh, increase the timer so now we're going to stay on the back bar or off our back bar i should say for even longer if you'd like to go back there and go ahead and hit your vigor go ahead okay vigor is going to give us another bonus right here at the very bottom after casting your vigor you get minor resolve okay so it's not just to heal it's there for resolve okay the last thing our back bar is eye of frost that is just in case we're having trouble killing somebody just from doing our regular activities and we'll add a little bit of dps we're going to go ahead and pop that we're going to run into them and do damage that way why is that important well because it can slow them down for us it has an aoe effect and it you know obviously um does does good good damage okay we can take it with us it walks with us we took eye of frost because when i when i cast eye of frost it walks with me just like my hurricane if i was to use hurricane or since i have um the lightning form Right, wherever I go, I'll do damage. Same thing with my storm. Now that I have Eye of Frost, wherever I walk, I'm dropping ice crystals. I can bar swap, it's still with me. Okay, so I'm applying damage wherever I go. If that's the, uh, if that's the going effect, if my enemy is not putting much pressure on me, and I am putting a lot of pressure on them, but I just can't get them, I'm gonna go ahead and use that. That's our damage ultimate okay and that's, that's all i want to use i'm not going for dawn breaker i'm not going for any of the you know really cool stuff to really knock people over man okay all right next uh, on the front bar we're going to use dark deal people like going oh, pvp can be interrupted that's fine it, it's fine I, we're going to work around that i promise camouflage hunter another dead spot don't need it I'm not out here trying to find every single ability that I feel like is going to give me, you know, 100% bonuses, okay? Uh, streak. Uh, because I want to be able to play with their stamina pool, okay? Just it, Streak cannot be blocked. So if they're out there blocking and acting like a, um, a Chad blocking everything, uh, make sure that you streak through them and make sure their hands go down to the ground. They got to break free. If they don't want to break free, that's fine. Put as much damage as you can into them while they're down on the ground, Okay. And on this build, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a specific way to do that. The next skill is a magic skill. As you can see, our front bar is all magic abilities. Magic, 
magic, magic, magic. It's all magic damage. But we're in this. It's funny. This character is not going to be the majority of the damage is not going to be damage. Okay. <laughs> the majority of the damage is not going to be magic damage. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna really burn through our stand pool faster than you might think. Okay. Uh, next skill up is crystal frags. Crystal frags does good damage, um, but it's gonna do even better damage uh, when we have everything going. Specifically, our elemental susceptibility and our crit surge, right? So crit surge pumps it up almost a 1k uh, just by putting crit surge on, all right? So um, next, uh, Haunting Curse, 8k, that's with our buff, and then Spell Wall. Brent, why in the world would you take Spell Wall? I'll tell you why. First off, I'm going to go through why I have, I think I went through why I have these skills on the back. Susceptibility, just to let you know, gives you at the very bottom, every one 7.5 seconds, the enemy is affected with a burning children's concussion effect. Next, um, also not only does it do that, but it also creates a breach, which means it reduces the amount of damage that the enemy can mitigate. All right, so it reduces their physical and spell resistances. So that's going to be important. It's two things for us. It also does one thing, which is it procs our back bar set, which I'll go over really briefly which is the perfected ice staff of Vatistrans. And we have defending on the back bar. Okay, because we're not going to be on the back bar very long. You could take infused if you'd like. I think you could use infused if we use the storm with it. So that's fine. So wh why do we take this? Um, the reason why I take it is because that little beam right there does great damage. Uh, well, not great damage, but good enough damage for us to keep it up, okay? It's going to create it, the ability for us to do a little bit of extra damage. It's going to proc minor vulnerability whenever they are hit by a uh, shock status effect and that shock status effect is going to give us the opportunity to do a little bit more damage because they have minor vulnerability on their person okay the front bar the real reason why we have dark deal is so we can get stamina back you see that it says bargain to restore magic uh, so give away magic to get about 9,000 health and then stamina instantly and stamina over 10 seconds. We're gonna really focus more on the idea of getting that 10 second stamina. Also, you get minor berserk and minor force to increase our damage done directly and our critical damage. That's why we're taking the Thief Mundus. Also, it gives us um, right here under exploitation, access to the dark, dark magic passive. Um, you're gonna wanna take all these passive that are from the dark magic skill tree you don't necessarily have to take every single one from this skill tree the rebate um you could use uh ultimate obviously daedric protection increases your health while you have a we're good with that one that's great too and then this one i um you don't have to have that one up because we don't have a pet, okay? So you don't have to take Expert Summoner if you don't want to. Uh, going over the last skill tree for passives, the Storm Calling passives, yes, 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 and yes. So all of those passives, okay? So Dark Deal, we just went over while we cast it. We're getting the passive, which is for the crit, and we're also getting minor berserk and minor force. You don't have to keep it up 100% of the time. If it falls off, don't freak out. Just apply it right before you go into combat. You'll be just fine, okay? Next is Streak. We said is to play with their stamina because it's going to stun them, all right? The other one is um, we talked about already, which is Crystal Frags. Why Frags, Brennus? Oh, we need a magical skill. It's our hardest hitting magical skill on this character. And it does this, which is when you hit an opponent with a directly charged uh, dark magic ability, you heal for a blah, 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 about 4k health. And PvP is cut in half, so it's about 2, okay? Which is still great. We're going to pair that with our crit surge. Both of those can crit. Both those heals can crit. So we can end up with a 4k, maybe 5k heal in PvP simply from casting frags and having our crit surge up, okay? Why is that? Well, because we have a high health pool. Next. Haunting Curse, we're going to cast that um, when we need to as well. The idea behind casting it is you're going to cast it, and it's going to have a delayed burst. We want that delayed burst because we want our enemies to kind of feel like they're very comfortable, and all of a sudden, we hit them with a nice little combo, hopefully, if it lines up for us, okay? And if not, it's still going to help us burst them down, regardless if the combo hits or not, okay? Or hits perfectly, I should say. 
Um, next, we're going to go over da, 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 any other passives. We're on a sword and board. Um, we're not taking any skill except for spell wall. Why spell wall? Spell wall because it automatically blocks everything for no cost and it reflects all projectiles cast at you for seven seconds. That means if you have a sork from range trying to like burst you down, throwing frags, throwing all kind of stuff at you, right? Light attacks, or if you have somebody hitting you with a snipe, you pop this baby and guess what? Everything shot at you gets reflected back at them. All, you know, um, all uh, burst abilities that are from range projectiles, okay? Also, real quickly, when we take this, boom, we can now block for free. I'm holding the block button right now. You can't see it because it's not making me block while I hit it, okay? As soon as the block fell off, or as soon as the ultimate fell off, you saw my block came up. So you're blocking for free. Why is that important on this build? Well, because on this build, we're going to be bashing. This is a bash build. So I'm going to go ahead and get up close to him. I'm going to hold this, spell wall, bash, 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 and look at my stamina barely moving and then recharging right and then once it goes off you can see my stamina is moving much 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 more all right so as you can tell um that's going to be important for us that's spell wall okay spell wall keep that up when you can as much as you can um it's going to make your character tanky and it's going to allow you to apply more damage in combat at least for this build the way the build plays okay uh, champion points for now we got let's see we have ironclad we have resilience for crit resistance ironclad for damage reduction bulk work for a sword and board um, more physical and spell resistance and focused mending all right why not focus mending just in case we get some more heals out of there all right cool those are uh, important and then on the red tree we're gonna have um, survival instincts because it's going to lower your core combat skill cost. So our block is going to be reduced by 25% when we are affected by a status effect. So, wow, great, right? Yeah. So anytime you're affected with status effects, and you're going to be affected with status effects constantly, so it's going to reduce the cost of your core combat skills like block, like dodge roll, like bash, and we are a bash build, okay? Pain's Refuge, every time you have a negative effect, you get 2% reduction. We're going to go with that because we want that 20% damage reduction. We have Bracing Anchor, so when we block, because we are blocking a lot, we're going to go ahead and block for 20% more mitigation. And the last part, Fortify, because I want as much armor to stack on this character as possible. I've tried it without that, and I feel like they still cut through you as you know quickly as possible. I want as much armor as I can take on this character. Okay? That was the CPs. I think I did some of the passives. We'll do a couple more. Uh, one has sword and board. Fortress. You want to take all these. They're all very important because we're a bash build, specifically this one. Deadly bash adds 500 more damage and costs 50% less. Uh, we are on destruction staff, so we want to take all these as well. You want to be able to heavy attack. Why? We're going to heavy attack with this thing because if we're standing outside of keep, we're just going to keep doing this. Just heavy attacking. Heavy attack with the eye staff. We can get a free shield once every, I don't know, 10 seconds. Yeah, just keep doing that. Okay? Keep doing that. Um, doo -doo -doo. You also want to block with magic if you want to. That doesn't need that. Uh, that's fine. We can add more of a chance to elemental force. That's fine. Here you want to, like I said at the very bottom, equipped on ice staff reduces the blocking uh, cost by 36% and increases damage you can block. And the, 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 when you kill someone with destruction of ability, which we don't have any, but right here at the very bottom on trifocus, while an ice staff is equipped, blocking costs magic instead of stamina, which is just fine for this build. We want to save stamina because we're a block build. Okay. I kind of went through things quickly. We're going to go through it a, a little bit more slowly in just a minute after I go through what the gear is. Okay. Uh, one other thing we are is we are a Nord because we're going to get as much ultimate built as possible. First off, we're going to increase our max health and our frost resistance. Second, we're going to increase our max stamina. And the, the second paragraph over here, while you take damage, you gain five ultimate. That's an automatic effect once every 10 seconds. And we're going to increase our spell and physical resistance, which is great. We want to be as tanky as possible because we're a block build. Take as many of the um, assault and support passives as possible. Um, you want the undaunted passives. 
Uh, you want the Fighter's Guild passives. They're going to add damage. And they're going to add your ability to under banish the Wicked to generate ultimate anytime that you kill any enemy. That could be anybody. It could be just adds at a, at a pin, okay? Um, da -da 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 um, we are on two, two, three when it comes to our armor weights, so we're gonna need all the benefits from any from all of these. There are gonna be a couple that you can take out. Uh, we have two light, three medium, uh, two heavy. You can adjust this and go three, three, one. I would that would be three light, three heavy, one medium. The reason why we're in three medium is because we want to be able to increase our stamina recovery by a total of twelve percent. If we take off two more pieces of stamina. I'm sorry, excuse me, uh, armor, then we're going to lose 8% of our stamina recovery, which is significant. We want to have a high stamina recovery on this build because we are trying to um, increase our ability to do damage uh, with, our, with our bash attacks, right? The other cool thing is, where is it at? A dodge roll cost reduction by 12%. Um, you know... It's all together. It's not a real big... We don't need the agility on this one, per se, because our bash isn't based off of uh, your weapon and spell damage. So, I mean, some of this stuff, yes, you could... Like I said, you could reduce this down to one medium, three light, three heavy. The reason why you want to go with three light is because uh, two reasons. First reason is reduces the cost of break free. Reduces... And at la very last one, reduces the cost of bash by 3%. So the only thing that costs you... or will constantly cost you is bash, Okay. So if you want to reduce that bash cost, that's fine. Bash cost is very, very cheap, though, so not a big deal. But what is a big deal for us is, yeah, the magic recovery is great because we're going to be casting a lot of magical skills, right? Uh, the crit is great, but this, the spell resistance is great as well. The crit is great. That's going to be, I think it's a 1% bonus for each time that you put a piece on. But right here, every time you put one on, you get 1K penetration. So we would add one more piece. That would be one more K Penetration and penetration is kind of the king of PvP. All right, heavy armor. Um, we want all of them. You're gonna, if you add another piece, you get more resistances. The pieces themselves carry more resistances. You're gonna get more access to this constitution bonus, which is gonna give you more um, flat region for just taking damage every four seconds from magic and stamina, which is great. Flat access to uh, region every four seconds. Uh, it's going to increase your max health. It's going to increase the amount of uh, resources you get from your heavy attacks. And healing received also, okay? So those are all important. Uh, also, heavy armor, if you put another piece of heavy armor on, you're going to get access to even more bash damage. So that's fine as well it's, it's pretty cool too okay and you can also block more damage one percent more which i mean every percent point is important all right so you could go like i said three three one three heavy three light one medium or you could stay like i have it which is two three two which is two medium um two light i'm sorry three medium two light two heavy i think the three three one is actually better i just didn't think about that till afterward okay just for this build I think that's everything. We kind of got through it very quickly. The next part is uh, simply the build. All right, the build is Eternal Yokuda on the first on the front bar with a sharpened um, weapon and a Crusher enchant just to give us a little bit more pin. Okay, because we're not we're not we're not totally you know focused on pin on this build, but more pin is always better. Okay. Next. Back bar, Vatistrans Ice Staff. So when we apply that um, elemental susceptibility, is going to apply that nice little dot that we showed earlier. This nice little string right there, okay? It does, it does a little bit of damage for us. It's not very much damage. It does a little bit of damage, but it also gives us the access to status effects, which is, which is rather important for what we're trying to do here because we want... Um, the characters that we're playing against that have like a minor vulnerability, which you're going to get from them having a uh, status effect caused by uh, taking um, shock damage. Okay. I mean, you can even put a shock glyph here on your weapon too, to give you even more like a chance to get that. Okay. Cause we're going to be bashing quite a bit. And that 5% is way better than this little eight one one pin. So you, you might want to go with a, a shock glyph. Okay. Or, um, 
monster set is Ro we're not going to run a, a um, mythic. We're going to run Roska the Warped Mask and Arm Cop. Um, I like to have as much M pin as possible. I mean, five M pin and then two um, re reinforced pieces with your heavy legs and heavy chest if you'd like. Um, all stamina glyphs except for no, they're all stamina glyphs. Yeah, because all of our um, our points are in health when it comes to our um, attribute points. Okay, so all stamina glyphs, right? So um, everything in pin, I would say, except for the legs and the chest. And you can do those reinforced if you like. And it's pretty simple. Roscoe the Warped is our um, monster set. Why? Because it gives tons and tons of recovery. So you're going to start to glow green. Oh, first off, let me back it up a little bit. Why did I pick Axie Return of EQ Um The two through four is good. Uh, even the two through five, you have two five-piece bonuses, which you don't normally see unless it's perfected gear. This one, you don't have to have perfected. It's just there for you. You're going to have two bonuses of, of healing taken all the way up to 8%, which stacks with our CP Mundus, I mean, our CP points that we have slotted. And that is the one that's uh, focus mending for an extra 10%. So now we have an 18% bonus to our healing, which is great. But the, the right here at the very bottom, when you take damage at 25% below health, you heal for about 23,000 health and gain 100 ultimate. So that's in PvP, that's going to be a 10k heal, which can crit. So it might end up being a 20k heal, right? That's pretty much up to full. Now it says every one minute, and that's fine. Um, for the people who are running sets like, um, what is that set? Mars Bomb, right? Mars Bomb, the heal is a 14, a 1.4k heal. 1.4. For each negative that cleansed, up to six. Six times 1.4 is not very high. Give me so six times 1.5. Um, blah, 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 blah. That's like what? Four? 4K? Somewhere, right? 4K? 4.5K? I don't know. 4K, I think. So 4K, then you got to cut that to have in PvP, so it's 3K. Right? So it's, it's, it's a okay heal. Mars Bomb. But if you compare Mars Bomb to this here, which is the Eternal Yakuta, it's going to be like um, much different. Not only that, but Mars Bomb has a side. The, the added effect is it cleanses all these negative effects, which is great. But again, it only does that once every uh, 30 seconds. This, once every minute, better heal, and it gives you 100 ultimate. Yeah. I'll take that 100 ultimate on this build any day. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. Okay? So the sets are Yokuda on the front bar and the jewelry. Your jewelry um, is going to be infused all with bash glyphs to increase our bash damage. Um, the front bar, like I said, is going to be sharpened. Your shield can be whatever you want it to be. If you want to be infused or it doesn't matter um, to get more health if you'd like. Um, infuse. I wouldn't go defending. It's kind of a it's kind of a small piece with only seventeen hundred. Um, you can go with impin again if you'd like to be even tankier. But sharpened on the front bar weapon. Again, I would like I said I would go with a shock glyph instead of a um, crusher. But you can play it however you like. And then the jewelry is all infused, all bash. And then you're going to have Deadlands Demolisher. Um, the other five pieces on the body. Your two light pieces will be your hands and your waist. And then medium and heavy on the other pieces. Okay, your, your heaviest pieces should be your chest and your legs. It's a craftable set, so you can make it however you'd like. That's why I like the set. Brandon's how are we going to play this? All right, let's talk about what you should do before you're going to combat. You're going to buff up, right? Our buffs are crit surge, um, lightning form, and whatever that thing is, vigor. Then before we start the fight, we're going to hit him with this little thingy here, this little... Zappy do right. Psh. Hopefully we're close enough where our little Zappy do goes off. Hey, go off Zappy do. There it goes. Okay, get you relatively close. We're in combat. Boom. I need this to do what? To fracture them more than anything. To fracture them. I'm on front bar now, right? I can take this if I want. Actually, before I start the fight, I'm gonna do this, 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 and that. Up to you though. You ain't gotta be too complicated, right? Let's not overcomplicate it. Now we're in combat. We're fighting. What's our rotation? We're going to get close. We're going to block. 
we're going to hit them with curse and a frag and when the frag hits I'm gonna start bashing now I can do what I would like to do at this point is throw another curse another frag if a good frag comes up take that one and just block until my curse pops it popped already I want to take it on the first pop okay what do I mean the first pop it has two pops right so I'm gonna throw it throw my thing one two three four five it pops throw it again throw that free frag one two three four five throw it again throw frag one two three four five throw it again throw frag that's how it works okay so I'm gonna say that again every time you get that first pop on that curse you're going to throw the frag after so and then start your rotation boom 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 pops boom 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 I got a free one take it boom 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 throw it again throw frag block out of it boom 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 okay now what if Brennis we're having trouble maintaining our our resources when it comes to bash okay let's take a look at that boom let's rotate all the way through this and see what happens how fast we go through our bash okay that's the rotation make sure you wait till that frag is all the way out of your hands because it's gonna it's gonna channel throw another one because it's there it blew up throw it throw it bash till it blows up we are not getting into our resources are we our resource is very like I don't see my <laughs> stamina going down very far I don't know about you guys I thought it was going to cost me a lot more to get through there. You know what's happening right here, though, is I'm, it's not costing me anything because I'm not blocking any attacks, okay? I'm not blocking any attacks. In combat, though, that meter from bashing, you see how that bash didn't cost us a whole lot, right? In combat, when you're on console, when you hold block and bash, it's going to cost you block and bash at the same time, Okay? So just keep that in mind. Keep an eye on your stamina. If it gets to the point where your stamina is so far down that you can't handle doing anything else anymore, what you should do is pop a potion. Or if that's still an issue and it's not really helping, you can wave your hand and use your dark deal. What I would recommend at that point, though, is if I'm really, really low on stamina, you know what I'm going to do? Not all that. I'm going to pop my shield bash. Right, my little shield here, and I'm just going to get after him. Because now all of my blocking is free. The only thing that's costing me is my bash. Okay? It is, this is one of the only ultimates where you can play it like this, where you can do it offensively and defensively. It's a free block. Block is no longer costing us anything. Right? And we are doing damage to the enemy because we are a bash build. Okay, if you are, and this is and this is also meant to be, be played very aggressive. Okay, so if you're if you're playing the build and you're going against another player, because you're running Eternal Yokuda, you're getting that free pop of ultimate whenever you take damage at 25%. Play aggressively. If they're really pressuring you, um, and you feel like you're not doing enough damage, or you feel like you're not um, getting into them as much. Try to do even more, you know, streak through them, throw a frag. They can't, the cool thing about the way the sort plays is they can't get away from you. There's nothing they can do to get away from you. You can also use dark deal to proc frags, right? If you wanted to, just keep doing this or throw a frag if you want to, throw a curse at them, right? We have range damage on this build as well as we have um, melee damage. So if they want to play tight up on you, come on, boo, get close. Let's do it. Let's da let's dance. Okay? Let them play close if they want to. All right? They're close. They're close. Are they far? Guess what? You're going to eat a frag, boo. I'm going to streak you down. I'm going to make you have to put your hands on the ground. I'm going to get you another frag going. I'm going to get you another little curse going. Right? I'm going to dark deal if I have to. Right now, I can run out of resources in Magicka pretty easily. 
okay? Uh, maybe even more easily than stamina. So just kind of watch your resources. Um, your Magicka is your safety button, not your stamina. So if you're out there punishing them with your Magicka, block a little bit if you're out of Magicka. Okay, your, your Magicka, your, your block isn't going to cost you anything but stamina when you're on your, um, your stamina bar, right? You're doing damage, you get pummeled a little bit, you want to play, you want to turtle up a little bit, hey, you know, wait for your stuff to pop, for your Eternal Yakuda. When it pops, apply some damage, right? Because you're going to get a big fat heal out of it. And after you're done applying damage, you're like, man, I still got to gotta play defensively now. They're still hitting me a lot. Boom. Got it. And guess what? I'm telling you a little, a little secret. While that shield is up, I can dark deal as much as I want to. Right? So I'm here. Uh, they can interrupt your dark deal if you're by yourself, right? If, if I'm sorry. If they can interrupt your dark deal... Not while you're by yourself, but they can just interrupt Dark Deal. It's one of the cast is, uh, casting skills that, that can be interrupted, right? But if I have this little shield wall up and I'm casting Dark Deal, guess what? No interrupting, right? I'm just, I'm just, I can do this all day as long as my little shield is up, okay? And the cool thing again about that spell wall, I'm going to say it again, is not only does it protect you for free to allow me to cast this little thingy, but it also reflects objects back at the attacker. Okay? So, that's the best I got for now. Hopefully you guys like it. I'm going to be building this. Um, there is another version where you can go one bar, Deadlands Demolisher, with what I would re recommend would be uh, Amber Plasm, Deadlands Demolisher, Oak and Soul, one piece crags for penetration okay and you're not going to have as much penetration on the build because you won't have access to back bar skills but it's a it's a great setup uh your ultimate can still be shield bash um the only thing you swap out on your front bar here keep the front bar exactly the same all you're going to do is take off our little dude on the front camo hunter and put vigor instead it's a very simple swap okay Good luck. Hope you enjoy it. And I'll catch you guys later.